this is, I think today will be the last of the streams. Let's go to code.com curriculum. I have one last challenge, Socket.io. Okay, so... Okay, so Socket.io, basically I'm creating a chat room. A chat room should show users that are currently logged into the chat room. And I'm going to be building off of what I did yesterday in Apollo. So let's first go to master branch and then merge P6, problem six. Well, let's make sure problem five is merged into what about problem four. Okay. Yesterday I did five, six, and seven. So let's make sure all of that is merged in. And then I'm going to go to problem eight. Make sure I'm in sync with master. Now go to JS6. So I only have one JS, so I'm going to be running one JS file. And then I need to run webpack. Cool. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to be building a React chat room, so let's see. Before I build it, let's make sure uh, my app is set up for it. So if I go to cerny.com, um, this should load the Pokemon, Pokemon stuff. So right now it's, if you go to slash three slash, that's when you go to Pokemon search. But I think if I go to the root folder here, I want this to load up the Pokemon search, so I'm gonna set that one up first. So again, I'm going to rely on my Kanban board. This one is done. So to do set up routing correctly. Okay, so let's set up the routing correctly. If I go to cerny.com, it should show me the Pokemon page. So so here's my server and then app.get this I want to do maybe an array of routes app.get that and then slash the root, and then Pokemon maybe. Yeah, let's see. And I'm going to put this after the GraphQL stuff. So I'm going to put this after the GraphQL. Here's the GraphQL middleware. I'm going to put this after. And if I put this after, I no longer have to do an array, I just do every route. I send back 3.html. So now if I go to cerny.com, it loads up Pokemon Search. Cool. And then I want to make sure that if I go to GraphQL, I can still see the GraphQL sandbox. Right, so the important thing to note here is that if I put this above, then I won't be able to go to GraphQL because it will send back 3.html first. Let me just show you. If I put this above the GraphQL stuff, now when I refresh, it will load Pokemon Search. We don't want that, right? So this needs to go after. Okay, so now our GraphQL works. Um, our routing is set up correctly, that's done, and now I can log in as a Pokemon. Okay, and then when I log in as a Pokemon, um, I should be able to go to slash, um, 
Let's say I log into Polyworld. Login. Okay. So now I'm logged in. And after I'm logged in, if I enroll into a lesson, I want this to be a link to a chat room. So when I click on this, it should take me to a chat room that I can chat with other people. So when I click on this, it should take me to a chat room. So I need an enter chat link. So let's do that. So in my enrolled component, I have the star value and then I have the click value and below that I want an A tag that says enter chat room. Cool. And then the URL will be slash chat rooms slash lesson dot title. And this needs to be a URL Cool. So now if I go to the lesson here oh, It's loading So now if I log in Enroll it says enter chat room Cool. So now if I click on enter chat room, it should take me to a new chat room. Okay, so chat rooms is good. So so now when I'm in the chat room, I want it to display the chat room and the title of the chat room so I know which title I'm in, which chat room I'm in. Right now, the chat room says Foundations of JavaScript, right? So, let's see. So this, um, when it loads, I also want to load in a new tab. So target equals blank. So by doing target equals blank, when you refresh the page, Actually, let me make the server, let me stop the server from restarting. Okay. If the server keeps restarting, then we won't be able to, you know, if the server keeps restarting, we lose the cookie. So we constantly have to log in. So I want to save myself some time. When I click on chat room, it should automatically open up a new tag. So this is good. Now when I refresh the page, I want it to show um, the chat room and the foundation and the chat room title. So to do that, I need to go to where I'm doing the routing, where I'm parsing the URL. And that is in app.js. In this file, I'm passing the URL. So, this is the pop. So now, if it didn't return the Kanban board or the star, that means this is the Pokemon app. So let me write this down. If did not render Kanban or stars, then this is the Pokemon app. Okay, cool. And if it's the Pokemon app, we gotta pop again because if you look at the URL for chat rooms, it has this, which is the lesson title, and this is the chat rooms. So const um, sub path parent path. Um, let's see, this is not good. So, const path 
array equals split and then path array dot pop. So this pop the last one, and then when we do path array dot pop again, it should give me the second to last one. So if parent path is equal to chat room, then cons content equals I want to set the content to Pokemon enrollment. And if it's a chat room, I want to set the content to the chat room. So content equals chat room. And then room name equals the app path. So then we pass in the content here. Okay. So now we have a new path called chat room um, for the chat room, and we need a chat room component. So before I split it into a different file, I want to just quickly create a simple chat room to test to make sure everything works. So here's a component, and the prop it takes in is room name. So I'm going to return a div with an h1 title room name all right so now if i go to the chat room it should show me the chat rooms but it doesn't so there is something wrong what went wrong it should be equals to chat rooms All right, so let's refresh the page and it works. So if it grabs it from the URL, the way the URL does it is spaces are replaced by percent 20. So we have to convert the URL spaces into normal strings. And to do that, there's a JavaScript function that's in the browser called decode URI component right it converts it back to spaces so we need to run this function so run app path so app path is the first argument from this pop so this is app path Cool. So now it displays the chat room page. And everything we're going to be building in the chat room, um, let's put in a new file called chat room. So in the new file called chat room. And then we're going to create a chat room file. And we're going to move everything we've done in the chat room here. And then this should export. Okay. So now if I refresh the page, everything should work. Oh, it doesn't work anymore. React is not defined. So whenever you use components like this, you're actually using React. So you've got to import the library. OK, cool. So we have our chat room. This looks pretty good. Um, and if we take out all of the other ones, it should load the Pokemon page. So that looks pretty good, too. Um, and then I go to the chat room, and now I'm in the chat room. So everything at a high level, whenever I start a new project, I always do the high level end-to-end -end first and for the setup. So chat room routing setup is done. Okay. Cool. So let's 
do a quick commit here to save my changes. So git at js six. Git status. Git commit dash m. Um, adds routing for by routing I mean like displaying different components when user goes to different URL paths. So we. Add, this change adds routing for challenge when challenge eight. Cool. So all the other challenges, all these files that are untracked, I want to remove them. So get status is clean. Okay. So now that that is done, um, next up, I'm going to implement implement socket IO or add socket IO library. And then after I add it, design system design for how to add chat messages so system design and data structure cool and then after that I want to build presence functionality to data structure For presence functionality in my chat room, I need to know who's online and who is not. So I need to build the tr presence structure and then data structure for real time chat messages update. Okay, so first things first, let's add the socket IO library. And the good thing is, socket io um, we can just google it let's google socket io and it's the first search result okay socket 2.0 is here resources learn get started so socket io just like a lot of the good libraries out there um, they show you how to get started little by little. Um, so here's the HTML. We already have that. Socket IO. We need to install the library. Yarn add socket IO. So now we have socket IO installed. Um, we have app already, so we don't need this line. We have to create our own HTTP server. Okay, we need this. We need that. So, let's see how this works. So for some reason, they need a HTTP. So after create app, we need to create an HTTP server using the HTTP module. What does that do? I don't know. So what does this do? Okay. Ah, it's because when we use socket IO, socket IO, when we require it, this library is a function. And we need to run the function and pass in HTTP from here. So now we know HTTP is used to create the socket object. We don't need this. And then all of the socket IO logic goes here. And instead of app.listen, we use HTTP.listen. So that means that 
in the app.listen here, after we get all of the Pokemon, we do http.listen. So with Socket.io, you have to listen to your incoming requests a little bit differently. So let me save this file and restart the server. Make sure my website... Oh, it says listening on port 3000. Let me change that because that might be confusing. Okay. Okay, listening on port 3013. Let's make sure... After all of that change, my website still works. And it still works, so that's good. I'm not logged in anymore because I restarted my server. So when you add, when you create a s server with HTTP and then when you pass HTTP into Socket.io, Socket.io would add a middleware to give you a JavaScript file called Socket.io.js. So this JavaScript library is from this socket.io middleware. So now if I go to cerny.com slash socket.io, like this is my website and this path, even though I don't have this file, socket.io creates it for me. So now I have this JavaScript file. Okay. So it's telling me that I have to put it into my HTML file. So 3.html, we need a JavaScript. I usually load all of my JavaScript at the end of the file, probably before that. So I want to load the, uh, the socket.io file and then load my main JavaScript file. And the reason why I put all my JavaScript at the bottom is because if JavaScript doesn't work, um, then I want to make sure that everything else still still loads pretty much Cool So we have socket IO now um, Now let's go to our chat room JS and then when this pitch runs let's uh, Let's do some socket IO stuff So I'm going to create a socket IO object like this socket and then this loads the socket io object that's okay this connects and then whenever i let's see each socket also fires a special disconnect event huh. so Let's do socket on connection and see what happens on the server. So on the front end, on my JavaScript, all I do is socket.io, that's it, right? And then on the server side, on connection, I say user connected. But, so every time there's a connection, it will log a user has connected. Um, but that's not happening, so. That's all I need to do. So if I refresh the page, oh, I need to be on the chat room, that's why. So now that I'm on the chat room, um, it calls when this page loads, it runs it runs this function which triggers this to run on the server. So it says a user is connected. Cool. Okay. So now my server knows every time someone goes to this website, it'll say a user has connected. Um, okay, so now if I 
go here. Right now it says a user has connected. If I go to another browser and I type in um, cerny.com slash chat rooms and I go to a chat room, it will say a user has connected. So every time someone goes to this website, it'll say a user has connected. Okay, and all it takes to do that is just to run this one functionality. Now, if I close the browser, it should say disconnected. So if I do socket.on, let's see how they do disconnected. Socket.on disconnect. Socket.onDisconnect. So when this socket disconnects, then um, what happens to this socket? Console.log, the user disconnected. Okay. So four users are connected now, right? So I'm going to close one of my browsers. It'll say the user disconnected. And then, yeah, that's good. So every time you refresh, it'll say the user is connected or the user is disconnected. Thanks for trying this out. Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to see who is connected and who is disconnected. So every time you guys are refreshing the page, it would say user disconnected and the user connected. Yeah. So all it takes to do that is just this one line. This connects to the server and it tells the server, hey, I'm connected or I'm disconnected. Now I want to know who disconnected and who disconnected. And the who is... I think socket.id would tell me who it is. So let's restart the server. Nice. So this tells me who is connected. So now there's four users. If I do disconnected, it should tell me who disconnected. So. Okay, so I'm going to restart my server. All right, so I'm going to connect. So this is me, I'm connected as SA1BP4. And now I'm going to close my browser. User disconnected, SA1BP4, that was me. And this, the second user who connected, PHJVNF, also left, so they disconnected. Okay. Cool. So now we can keep track of who is connected and who is disconnected. So that, that's pretty empower, empowering, right? Um, so also now, since I have a socket.io, maybe on the front end, I can do console.log socket.id. So on the front end, let's see if we can figure out, if I am a user, let's see if I know what my ID is that was given to me. So let's try this again. So if I go to my chat room over here, and I refresh the page. Ah, oh, socket is undefined on the front end. That is not good. We need a way to tie in the currently logged in user. Um, so, and in order to do that, the front end, the browser needs to know who he is. So how do I know who I am on the front end? Let's see. Broadcasting. I have to try it out, I guess. Socket is not defined. So I'm gonna maybe set a timeout.
and then so here's the thing I'm gonna show you guys usually at work whenever I have an object like socket and I want to see what the value is what I always do is I do window so window dot like demo socket equals socket so at work I would create a window object create a window property and set the value to whatever I want to know so now if I refresh the page I can just type demo socket to see what it is right so demo socket has is an object and it has all of this it has an ID So my demo socket ID is 1VB KPYX. That's it. And so now, how come when I console.log socket.id, it is undefined? Why is it undefined when I load the page? But then afterwards, it's here, right? What is going on? And the answer to this question is because um, it takes time for this for the browser to connect to the server. So on the front end, you need an event listener so that when it's connected, then I console.log socket.id. Right. So let's see if this works. It didn't work. But this user is 2AXNJO. Um, if you look at the server, the server knows that. Did the server say there's a 2JXNXJ? No. It's 2AX. So that's a different server, it seems like. So there's something here. Why isn't this person registered with the server under the same ID? Hmm. So let's look at demo socket again, and then let's see if we can find out more information. So demo socket connected is true. The ID is 2AXNJ. And then subs. I don't know what that is. Hmm. And this socket does not seem to match with whatever we have in our server. Okay. So let's move on. Um, that might cause us problem later on, so we'll figure it out when we do them. So socket IO library, we added it. We can see the user connecting and disconnecting. And now we need to figure out how to add chat messages and data structure. So specifically um, for rooms. So every one of our chat rooms, we have a room, right? So need to store free app diagram let's make a diagram okay here's the browser browser sends a request to the server Um, when the browser first, there's a socket IO connection from the browser to the server. Um, this is the socket IO connection. Uh, 
Okay. So when the browser sends a socket IO connection to the server, we need to know we need to answer a few questions. So on the first question, we have socket ID. How, who is the user? Right, what is the, who is the user that's connecting? That is connecting to the server. Who is it? And this is um, done via cookies, right? Like whenever the browser sends a request to the server. So on a normal request, when the browser sends a request to the server, it automatically sends cookies. So our server reads the cookies and our server knows, oh, this user is Polywag or Pikachu or somebody. But in a socket connection, it's not a request, it's just a connection. So there's no middleware. How do we know who is connecting to the server, right? Um, so one way is to just emit an event, like saying, hey, I am Polywag. But that's not secure. Because anybody can pretend to be any user. So my guess to this is to send a request to the server with socket ID. So if I send a request to the server with socket ID and then now server can correlate socket ID with user with Pokemon. Cool, so this is the first part. Um, let's try to figure this out, and then at the once we do this, we would be able to have a list of a list of all logged in users. Okay, so there is a question. The question is, what is the purpose of socket IO? So let's look at traditional. That's a very good question. What is the purpose of socket IO? Here's the browser. Let's say we have five browser. Browser one, browser two, browser three. Right? Traditionally, like if browser one sends a request, to create message to the server. So if browser one sends a request to create message on the server, the server sends back a response message created, right? And then the server has the data. But then every browser, so, Every browser would need to send a request every second. Get messages. So this browse all the other browsers doesn't know, oh, is there a new message? Is there a new message? So then the browser every second would need to send a request to the server to get the message. So then every browser needs to do that. every second including the first browser so the first browser would need to do that also right so if you look at the server how many requests are you getting per second per second in the traditional request and response you need to hit the server um, send one request so three browsers three requests per second 
this is the traditional way of without socket IO. And now if you do with socket IO, here's with socket IO. If someone creates a message, so let's remove that. So whenever somebody creates a message, the server lets everybody know, everybody who's connected know whether when they have received a, um, a request or oh, when there's a new message. So browser one creates a new message, server lets the other browsers know. So per second, three browsers, they don't need to send any request, zero requests per second. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, with socket IO, you reduce the number of requests to the server. And then without socket IO, you constantly have to send a request to the server. This is really inefficient. If you have a million users, you're looking at a million requests per second. But with, uh, with a socket IO connection with a million users, um, you only update the user when there is a you know, when the server wants to push an update. And also traditionally, when in normal requests, you always have to send a request to get a response, right? Send a request, get a response. But in this case, the server can directly send data to the front end. Like, yo, this is you. Right? So, hopefully that answers the question. It's a really good question. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. So I think what I want to do next is I need to figure out who is the user that is connecting to the server. So after I'm connected, I need to send a request to the server with the socket ID. So then I need to figure out on the socket io how to do that so integrating meeting events i want the documentation and i need the client side unfortunately the they're hey they have a room concept that's so cool i can do connection dot Join. I can join a room. Nice. So this is io.onConnection socket. I think maybe we need to do it like this. Let's try it doing that on the front end and see if it works. So io.onConnection um, socket. I'm going to rename this to socket2. Let's see. So I'm going to refresh the page. Oh, io.on is not a function. Whoops. So it looks like I have to do socket.on. So socket.on connection never gets fired. That is really troubling. So I'm never able to connect. So I need to look at the documentation for the front end, but it seems like everything, all the documentation is on the f back end. io.onConnect, so these are all back end stuff. So where is the. F so 
So all the struggles I'm going through, you guys would probably go through the same struggles. When you guys try to integrate socket IO. Socket the on connect. So okay, so this is on connect, not connection. So on connect. Let's see if this works. Nice, my front end got a ID and this socket ID is C2AAH. So nice. And then server it says C2AAH. Right? So now my server knows. So now this user C2AAH I'm going to close it, right? And it says a user disconnected C2AAH. Make sense? So, what do I need to do next? So now I know how to do that. Um, and to figure out who is currently logged in, um, what I need to do is socket.io on connected events so socket.io on connect event i'm going to send a request to slash API slash register with socket ID. And then the server would maintain a list of present users where the socket ID is the key and then the Pokemon is the value. Okay, so this helps me keep track of who is logged in and who is not. And then on disconnected, we remove the present users object. Okay, so I'm going to do that. You need to register in order to okay so now let's make sure system design on how to add chat messages data structure for presence functionality so implement server side presence all right so i'm going to implement server side presence now So just to recap, what I'm going to do is when I'm connected, I'm going to send a request to API slash register. So on the browser, when I'm connected, I want to send a request to API register. And then with the query parameter of socket ID equals um socket.id and when I receive the response I'm going to convert it to JSON and then when I receive the data I'm going to console.log the data. Okay, so that's the front end I'm sending the request. And since I'm sending the request my server needs to um, get this request, request response. So I'm going to do API slash chat room slash register. That makes sense. Okay. Or maybe I can do that later. Yeah, slash chatroom slash register. That makes sense. 
So request request query rep dot query dot socket ID. So socket ID is here and then I think rec logged in Pokemon is going to be request.sessions or session I keep forgetting sessions dot Pokemon let's check my GraphQL um, let's check this GraphQL to figure out rec.sessions okay it's rec.session.pokemon so rec dot session dot pokemon and send back json name okay let's see let me restart the server okay there's a lot of people connected so somebody refresh thank you thank you and then their logged in pokemon is undefined right so to log in first you need to log in and then let's do poly world I'm going to log in now I'm logged in as a Pokemon I'm going to enroll into a class and now I'm going to go into the chat room and then it's going to say Logged in Pokemon Poliwhirl. Yeah, nice. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for logging in. So now we have our login Pokemon, right? And then we have the corresponding socket ID. Now on the server side we can start associating this users. So cons present. Chat room users equals an empty object, and then when the user is disconnected, I'm going to do um, I'm going to delete chat room users at index. Socket.id. Okay. And then when someone registers, then chat users at index rec.query.socket.id is going to be the Pokemon. So now I should be able to lot, like figure out who are who is connected and who is disconnected. But to be sure, I'm going to const.log chatroom users. Okay. So now I'm going to restart the server. So if you're logged in, you're going to have to... If you're not logged in, you're going to have to log in again. So go back. This time I'm going to be Metapod. Metapod entering chat room. Cool. Logged in po Pokemon is Metapod. We have a user that's disconnected. Now I'm logged in as Metapod. I'm going to disconnect. Boom. Gone. So user disconnected. So I have two connected user, um, one of them, one of which is Metapod. Actually, let me disconnect the other Metapod. Also, I think where's the other guy? I must have another one open somewhere. So Metapod, yeah, or maybe that's somebody else. But yeah, so now you can see the user 
list um, constantly updating based on who's connected and who disconnected. So that works. And now to make our life easier, I'm going to um, send back. Like, if you're not logged in, um, we're going to redirect you back to the login page so you know what's up. So if so const name equals that and then if the user is not logged in if user doesn't have a name then i want to send back json status 403 unauthorized and then let's see and always send back error. Hey, there's an error. And the message is not logged in. And then return. Cool. And then now, name. So server side is done. I'm going to tell them that, hey, you're not logged in, please um, return, please leave, essentially. Um, and then now, if data.error exists, then we want to do alert data.error.message and then return window.error location equals we tell the user we redirect the user back to the login screen okay and then also whenever someone connected instead of printing this out i think i want to just print out the chat room users like to show who is connected i think that makes more sense now let me restart the server So a bunch of users connected, but nobody is logged in, which is why it's always an empty object. We only care about users who is logged in, right? So now if you, if I go to chat rooms, foundations of JavaScript, it would actually alert not logged in and then redirect me back to the login page. Oh no. Okay, that's not good. So, because I put this here, um, it's gonna connect every time this JavaScript is loaded. If you guys remember, Webpack takes all of your JavaScript and put it together into one. So, unfortunately, this is running on every single JavaScript page, and we don't want that. So we need to put this in here. But we don't want to connect to the socket every time this re-renders. So we need to use react.useEffect. So to make sure it runs only once, we pass in an empty object. OK. So now the front end should work. Let's try this out again. When I go to sony.com, it shouldn't be connected to the server. And then I'm going to log in with a pretty powerful Pokemon, Charizard. Charizard. So now I shouldn't say, it shouldn't say Charizard is connected unless I go to the chat room. So Charizard goes to chat room foundations of JavaScript. Nice, a user connected, Charizard, that's me. So now if Charizard leaves, I'm gonna leave. It's gonna be disconnected. And if I go to my other browser and I log in, let me try to log in with a different user
Nice. Somebody else logged in. So, Politoad. See how the user Charizard is gone, and now it only says Politoad. So now I'm gonna log in as Blastoise and go into a chat room. And it should say a user is connected. Nice. So a new user is connected, and now we have two users in the chat room Politoad and Blastoise. Now, if my Charizard, if I undo it and Charizard comes back into the chat room, it should now have three users connected. So let's give it a second. Oh, yeah. I need to refresh the chat, the chat room page. So now it has that. I think my logging is a little confusing. It's important to figure out where you log. You don't want to log on connection. You kind of want to log when somebody is registered. right? So whenever you register a new person, you want to log the new user, new registration. OK. So now our back end is done to figure out who is um, data structure for logged in presence. We're, to summarize this, we just did an object called um, chat room users, I think. Is that what we called it? Chat room users. So chat room users. Cool. So now we figured out how to do presence. So this is all it takes to, to do presence to figure out who is logged in, who is currently online, and who is not. So all of this is done. And then now we should design how to add messages and data structure. But before we do that, maybe we should build out a UI, like a UI to make this look good. So so that visually we know how what needs to be done so ui for chat room okay so let's do ui for chat room first and to do the ui for chat room let me quickly draw out what the ui is going to look like so here's the page I'm going to have a title over here that says online users. Okay, so online users is going to be here. And then there's going to be a line. This line is going to go all the way down. So all the online users will show up here. And then I'm going to have the title, chat room title, all the way here at the top. And then at the bottom, we're going to have chat room, chat message. A text area input um, because we're not doing any oh might as well let's just add a button here button inside that says submit to make it pretty okay um, okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this submit button, but I guess we can figure that out later. And then also we have all of the chat messages in here. So all the chat messages goes in here. Cool, so this is um, roughly the UI. 
and we have one div over here. This is going to be a div. Let's call this div the sidebar div. Sidebar div. And then we need a div on the right. So this would be content div. Okay, and then so content div is also going to be position fixed. And then chat room title is also going to be position fixed. So this is called room title. Here's room title. And then this is going to be, this is self-explanatory at this point, text area div. And then here's the messages div. So if you see all of these three, text area, chat messages, and room title are all children of content div and sidebar div. So let's do that. Um, let's build the CSS. Um, you know what would be cool before we even build out the CSS? Um, let's first, when someone registers, we want to send back a JSON of all the users. So chat room users. That would be cool. So yeah, so then we can see who the chat room users are. Let's restart the server and then now we can start the UI. I'm ready. Okay, so chat room JS. Okay, so the main div, we're going to have two divs, right? So one is going to be, um, let's create some style sheets. Styles is an object. Styles.sidebar equals, and sidebar is position fix, and then width, maybe give it like, 200 pixels and so just so we can see how it looks like let's give it a soft background color of red light red so light red okay and then since it's position fixed top is zero bottom is zero and the left is zero left to zero. So we have a div where the style is going to be styles.sidebar. Um, so this I can also do class name equals equal blah 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 and change the CSS file but I'm just too lazy for that right now. So now we have that. Now let's look at our sidebar see if it works. So I have to log in again. But, oh no. Caused an error. Module build failed. Private class properties? What? We have a, cl a private class property? Where? Where is our private class property? Oh, that's how you create a private class. So because we're in JavaScript, we have to type everything in object, object and strings. Now let's refresh the page. I command search, I want to be Charizard. Enter chat, Enter chat room. Nice. So we have our logged in user section, online user section. This looks pretty good. I like it. Um, let's give it a nice title. 
So inside there's going to be an h1 element and the title would be online users. Okay. Online users. Hmm. It looks too squished, so maybe let me see. Online users definitely look squish and it doesn't look centered, so I need to give it like text align center to center it. That looks good. And then 200 pixels is definitely too small. It looks very congested, so maybe 250. That makes sense. Um, and then online users, I think maybe h1 is too big so i think h2 makes more sense to me yeah this looks pretty good and then below it just an hr element so here's online users that is good this would show all of the online users. Okay. And then what we did was we need a styles.center. Um, center text. So center text would have a property called text align center. And h2 is going to have the style of center text. And then now I'm just going to put in a few Pokemons um, just for the heck of it. Um, let's say I have a h3 element Pikachu. Let's see how that works out. Or actually, might as well just get all of the data so console.log data see what data looks like I think data has a key called chat users so I'm just gonna push my luck okay now let's refresh the page online users looks pretty good right now chat room users I was right it has all of the users um, and the socket ID so we just want all the values from here so let's do const. So we want to set a state. So online users set online users. At this point, you should know your react.use state pretty well. We start off with no online users. So now cons online users component equals online users dot map username or name and then I'm going to return an h4 element with the name um, and of course since it's an array I need a key So I'm going to display online users component. All right. Okay, that didn't work out well because I didn't set the state. So set online users to data dot online users component no the on chatroom users but chatroom users is an object so we need to do object dot values awesome now I'm gonna send a request and I get a list of chatroom users yay we have chatroom users here so all these um, is too far to the left. Um, I don't like how it looks right now, but 
definitely there are two Pokemons with the same name. So yeah, that's just the nature of this pro this thing that that could have multiple Pokemons with the same name. But that's okay, not my problem right now. Um, let's see. I want to make this more pretty, so I'm going to. It would be nice to show the Pokemon image on the side as well. So to do that, I need to create a component. Const user equals name. So whenever I get the Pokemon name and the component loads, I want to show the image and also the name. So this needs to return image or div first and then source image, which is whatever image we get from the GraphQL response and then the h4 element with the name, right? So the name so instead of h4 key equals i, I'm going to use my user component. Here's my user component. And then now um, I need to use GraphQL. So let's see how I did that. So use query. OK. I need to run the use query because I need to send the request to get the user information. So let me just show you guys. I need to call the get Pokemon GraphQL in order to get the image. Right? We need to get the image of the Pokemon, so we need to send that request. And to send that request, since we have um, the use query Apollo, we can just do that. So. Okay, so loading error data. So console.log data. Let's see what the data is. And then use query user info. We're not going to be using user info. We're going to be using. Do we have a get Pokemon? We have a get Pokemon query. So nice. So we use the get Pokemon query. Pokemon, and then we need to pass in variables, name, and pass in the name as a variable. Now, let's look at what we have in the chat room. Everything is undefined. So, that means in the network request, when it sends a request to GraphQL, it sends get Pokemon, but it doesn't pass in any variables. So, So use query variables doesn't work, so we need to figure out how to use this use query. All right, we're calling use query hook. And then variables. So this is doing variables. So we're calling it right. I think I made a mistake by not passing in the name prop. So name equals name. Okay, now this should work. I made a new mistake. Okay, cool. So we got we got our get Pokemon. Ability. So here's data dot get Pokemon. When the pitch first load is undefined, so we got to be careful here. 
So now const image source equals. Um, I usually load a default um, default placeholder image. So when you're building production applications, you might want to use placeholder.com. This gives you like a sample image. So I'm going to use placeholder 150. Don't give me notification. So this is a pretty cool image URL. When you go to this image URL, oops. So some websites that hijack your copy. And now, wow, this is the worst website. Okay, so I have to type this out myself via dot placeholder dot com slash one fifty. Okay, so this looks like a pretty good placeholder image. So I'm going to set the image to here. And then if data exists and data dot get Pokemon and data dot get Pokemon dot name or dot image, then image source equals data dot get Pokemon dot image and then let's show the user picture here all right so now we should have a list of all of our logged in users yeah Poipole and Charlie Rizard, both here. But this looks really ugly, so let's style it. This div, I'm going to give it a display flex. And then this image is too big, so image, I think, width, or maybe we set the height. Um, height should be 50 pixels. Yeah, so height 50 pixel looks good. And then margin left 30 pixels. 10 pixels. Okay, so this looks good. Um, our div needs a display flex. So style equals styles dot um, online users container and then styles dot online users container is going to have display flex and then margin left so in when you convert it to JavaScript, you're using camel cased. So margin left is 10 pixels. Okay. And then this is online user image. We make the height, was it 50 pixels? Let's see, 50 pixels, okay. So image source is style online user image. Online users. So we have our online user showing up. Woohoo. Okay. So all the online users will show up here. Um, right now I'm logged in as Charizard. And then now the chat room title needs to show up at the top. So let's do that. We don't need the console.logs anymore. All right, so now we need the content box. So this would be the content. 
style equals styles dot content. So if you look at our original design, styles dot content is here. It's display top bottom right is zero and left is whatever this is, which is two fifty. So styles dot content equals also the same thing. Um, what one benefit of using JavaScript instead of CSS is that you can use variables like const side bar width is 200 pixels, right? So now you can do side bar width pixels. And then this fixed, so my position left is going to be sidebar with pixels. So left, and then give it a background color of green. So we have left, top, bottom, right. And right now, if I want to change the sidebar width to like 250, I just change this number and everything automatically adjusts. You can't do that with CSS. So that's one of the benefits of doing that. Okay, so here's our online users. Here's the main content. That's good. And now we need a title section, right? So title is inside the content. So let's give it a H1. And styles dot title and styles dot title is going to be um, take the name oh room name so and then we need styles dot title so styles dot title it's going to be position absolute. Left is zero. Left top. We don't specify a bottom, but we specify a height to be cons title height is let's say 50 pixels or 50. Then the height would be title height pixels. All right, let's see how title height looks like. I'm going to make it blue. All right, it doesn't look good at all. Now, this H1 should be inside that element so I messed up there the reason why it's on the whole page is because it needs to be inside the content div and for some reason it's not so now it is now let's try it again we have foundations of JavaScript that's cool but it has this weird margin to it, and it doesn't look like it's 50 pixels, is it? So you want to check to see how it actually looks like. I think you can click on... Whoa. I need to zoom out so I can see more. You can look at the layout and it shows you the content is 50 pixels, but there's a margin at the top and the bottom. So this needs a box sizing border box. This way we can control the actual height. And then we need to give the margin of zero. Zero. Padding 10 pixels.
and then let's give it enough pixels to match the height of this HR element and the height is 65 so title height needs to be 65 okay So title height needs to be 65 pixels. And then margin is going to be zero. Padding, we gave it a 19. Let's just do 20 pixels. Um, and the reason why I put this as a variable instead of hard coding like this is because the content the chat messages container is depending on the title. So that's why I need to make it a variable. Um, box, sizing, order box. Okay. So now we have the title and then now we have the, we need the input box. Let's make sure our Title looks good first. A title looks really beautiful. Now we need an input box, a text area. So within the content, we need a text area. And then style is equal to styles.text area. All right, so let's style this text area. Text area, I'm gonna have a, make it, I don't know what red and blue gives you, but we will find out soon enough. Um, left is zero, right is zero, top, we don't care. We just give it a height. Um, and then we want bottom to be zero. We don't want any padding. And then we want to give it a height to text area height pixels. Text area height. Let's make it 50. So, okay, we have text area height, that's good. And then we probably, left is zero, right is zero. Huh. Does it have a width? Why is it width 100%? Okay, it needs a width 100%. Okay. So, width is 100%. Okay, so we have a beautiful text area, we have a beautiful title, online users, looks like Likiri Likli joined us, and then we need a content area in the middle. So here is a div and a div, inside that div it's gonna have style, Mm, chat messages container. So now chat messages container is going to have left and right is zero. Bottom is going to be the text area height. And then the top is going to be title pixels title height. So text area from the bottom, title height, pixels, and then the width. We don't need the width. Um, margin zero. Padding, let's give it like 10 pixels to be nice. And then the background color, let's make it white. All right, let's see. 
Nice. Everything is all set up to go. Um, all we have to do now is implement the functionality. So UI is all done. UI for chat room is done. One thing that could be cool with a Kanban board is for it to time yourself how long each section takes. That would be cool. So get and one.js get and public three dot html chat room and package solves so what we implement chat room UI and room presence. Okay, that's good. So what I need to work on next, what I just realized is now when somebody leaves the chat room, it should the person should go away, right? That person should be gone. So when you leave the chat room, that person should be gone. Let's do that. When you leave the chat room, person should be removed. Okay, automatically. So let's remove it automatically. So once the chat room, once one person disconnects, so let me draw this out. When one person disconnects, so the server needs to let everybody else know, like, hey, that, that person is gone. So to do that, is socket dot broadcast um, removal someone got removed and then that person got removed data socket the id so whenever yeah, the removal. We broadcast removal. I don't know if broadcast is the right word, but there's only one way to find out. We need to restart the server and see if broadcast is the right word. It's not the right word. So let's look at server. Um, I need to go to the getting started and then server.emit maybe socket.emit chat message socket.on io.emit okay so broadcasting io is sent to everyone everyone so if if the server doesn't io.admit, it would also send to everybody. Whoa, what happened? So when it doesn't admit, it would actually send to this guy as well, and this guy, so everybody. So we don't want admit, we want socket to broadcast, broadcast.admit. I want to send to everyone except for the admitting socket. So I'll do it this way. Okay, socket socket the broadcast admit we user disconnect user disconnect event and then that's the data. Now let's start the server. Okay. So when the user disconnect, we want to emit the disconnect event. And then now on the front end side, when we get socket 
dot on when we get the user disconnect how do I spell disconnect user disconnect so when I get the user disconnect event I'm going to run get the data and the data is socket ID. So, but I need to know who are all the chat room users. So I need to do let chat room users equals an empty object. And when I get a response equals data dot chat room users. So now this after I register, I set chat room users object, and then when the user disconnects, then I delete chat room users at index data, and then I set the online users, I set the state to the new chat room users. Cool. Now let's see. So we have a new user that came in called Qtify. And then when I log in as Charizard, Charizard. Okay. I'm going to enter the chat room. Here's Qtify and Charizard. And then Charizard Mega is joining the room. Oh, Qtify left. So you see how online users um, switch. Thanks, Qtify, for leaving. And then as I was testing this, I realized, what about when new users come in? We don't have an event for that. So when new users comes into the page, um, we need to suck it up broadcast, right? So that's in the register function. So on the register function, I want to do IO, which is everybody. Everybody, I want to admit that there's a new user. And the new user is going to be... Hmm. New user, I'll just broadcast all of the users. So, chat room users. Make it easier for everybody. So, I'm just going to admit all of the users. Cool. And then, maybe for this one, I think... It might make sense to also just broadcast all of the users so you know who is yeah just to make things easier instead of one by one now on user connect disconnect on user disconnect and user connect well new user so on new user so now all the keys is called chat room users so we don't need that anymore we don't need this anymore we don't need to maintain our own state this is chat room users cool we just constantly set online users like that cool so let's refresh the page Well, wow. it's a lot of users. I hope it's not infinite. Okay. Ente. So there is a lot of Ente users. Um, and we realized another problem where this doesn't scroll. So we need to make sure that 
this scrolls. That means this needs a div, outer div. Thanks for doing that. So all of the users need an outer div. And this div needs style to overflow. So let's create an overflow CSS where overflow is set to auto. Okay, so right here, the overflow should be set to auto, but the height is too big. Huh. So this doesn't actually work. This is overflow scroll, maybe? So we need to get it to scroll, and this is an interesting problem where it doesn't seem to scroll. So to make it scroll, I guess we need the height to be 100%. So this way, it can scroll. Okay. So for it to scroll, we need the height to be 100% and then scroll. This would be good for... for that. Okay, cool. That's cool. We actually have a lot of chatters. So now we have this scroll event. Cool. Now every time we type and then we hit enter, it should send a request to the server that admits a new message to everybody. So Let's do that. Send a request, then my request should admit to everybody. So now, let's do on change as an object on change input change. So const input change equals a function. Let's do e dot target dot key. Let's see what this is. So console dot log what that is, and then also console dot log e dot key, and then e dot target dot value. So we want to find out, one of these is enter key. I want to know which one it is. So let's find out. So as a type. Huh. None of them. So we need the key so we can do enter. So maybe it's capital K. It's not right. Key. Enter React Native. React Native or React Input. Enter. How to use the Enter Key Event Handler on React. That's what we want. E dot target dot value. Using the Enter Key Event Handler. Why did they car code equals 13? So event.carcode. Let's see if the car code is 13. 
when I hit enter. Okay, it seems to always be undefined no matter what it is. So this guy has a shitty tutorial. Let's move on. Oh, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's on key up instead of on change. Haha. Hmm. It's always zero. Undefined zero. So this is undefined, and then this is card code is always zero. What is the issue here? How do I get enter? And key up event the card code. Text area, react, enter, key. This is the first search result. This is telling you to do on form submit. That's not what we want. Key down has an event and then event.key. But our event.key is not enter. So my logging isn't very good, so let's also do e dot key and then we do e dot target dot key and then do a car code here. This way I know what I'm typing. And then key and value. Okay, so now we have better logs. Um, it helps organize my mind a little bit. Is this too much going on? Okay, value key is U. When I hit enter, key is enter. So this is right. If e.key is equal to enter, then we want to send to the server this. And to send to the server, I'm going to do API chatroom messages. And method is going to be post headers is going to be um, content type. application json body json dot stringify message e dot target dot value and then the room name is just whatever the room name is cool so if if it doesn't equal to enter then return this makes the code cleaner, so I don't have too many indentation. And on input change is that. So now let's see if we can successfully send the request. And unexpected token comma. So when it gives me a red, chances are something is wrong. And it's because I didn't close this fetch. All right, so if I type hello world and I hit enter, does it send the request? Nice. It's sending the request to API chatroom slash messages. And now 
here I do post to messages. And then I get the name. If the name doesn't exist, I send back the middle, um, I send back unauthorized. And then I admit that there was a new message. Okay, so at a high level, this is what's going on. And our server needs data. So cons chat messages is an object or chat room. So now first we need to check cons chat messages equals chat room at index the body room name or an empty array and then chat messages dot push we want to push the person who said something and then the message which is request dot body dot message cool and then we admit the messages a messages event and after we admit that we need to send back rest.json status is okay and then after that we need to update the chat room cool so on the server side this is all we have to do to get the messages um, and then we'll restart the server just to get this part working and I think we'll be at a good stopping point So now you have to log in again. I'm going to log in as Charmander this time. Enroll in Foundations of JavaScript and go into the chat room. Now I am in the chat room and I can type hello world. 500, internal server error. Can I read property room name of undefined? So my server crashed and it's because I forgot to use app, the middleware called app express.json so they can read the incoming messages. So let's start the server again. And I need to log in. And then after logging in, I should cannot read property emit of undefined. This is in line 45. io.broadcast.admit is undefined. But It emits here, new user, and then emits here. Huh. Let's see what is going on. Can I write a mute new message? No. Can I read property admit of undefined? Okay, so this is a good time to stop. I think we can stop at this bug and then we can continue tomorrow and wrap this up. So what we need to do um, is what is left is the online users. Right now we're doing the system-wide enroll online users. So we need to tomorrow what we need to implement for Socket.io is the concept of rooms. Um, so basically, you should only see the people in the same chat room. So right now, it shows you everybody in the chat room. So you shouldn't be able to see everybody in the chat room. 
if you go to a different chat room, you should see the people only in that chat room. Right now, it kind of it will if you wait a while, it'll show everybody. And then also in the chat room message, um, we have to implement that, and we'll do all of that tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow.